Welcome to a brand new series. Um, I am getting a better camera stand in the future. So I thought I'd try out a new, obviously, series. I'll figure out how to um, also flip the camera around at some point so we can actually have a look at the spiders. Can we flip the camera around? I don't think we can. Let me see if we can flip the camera around. If not, we can always just um, figure out a way to do it. That's it. That's how to flip the camera around. All right. No, I don't want to cancel. Well, good. We'll go back to chat. Mm. Might as well go back to chat, shall we? Let's sort this out. Yeah, we'll do that. Do that. We'll do that. Mm. Do that. That's it. <clears throat> Just thought I'd test the water and see if people actually want to see um, live streams. Uh, the title, trying to some coffee. I've got my um, coffee here. Flip the camera around so we can actually potentially look at our spiders if people want to um, see um, the spiders. So we can actually shift out of the way. I definitely want to get like some cushions and stuff and do this more regularly on a Saturday night. So there's all the spiders. <laughs> As you can see, we've got to um, pretty much rehouse all of these. As you can see, let me just show you. <clears throat> Like I said, I'm getting a better stand in the next couple of weeks to make it um, a bit better. And this will be a every Saturday night um, live stream. So like I said, yeah, um, rehousing all these, basically these plastic enclosures are getting rehoused. Because we've got pretty much a load of these critter keepers that we will be re um, getting rid of. And it's going to be more glass enclosures, so like this one here, the Komodos, um, obviously we've only got um, two arboreals, we've got the P Regalis up there, and we've got the P Minia here, so I'll be rehousing the P Minia as well, and the first on the list will be rehoused, will be the Chiropatropus lividum, aka the Cobalt Blue, and also the um, the cobalt blue, and also the where was it? I want to find it. The um, Cinebatis Cayenne Kraken. Um, I can't see the comments, so I can't actually let me just check. I can't actually see the comments. Hold it up like this. I'm definitely getting a new stand. Top chat live, all messages are visible. Yeah, we'll do that. I can't really see the comments. <laughs> so I'm using my phone, so I don't actually know where the comments are. But like I said, um, this will be a live um, half an hour to an hour um, every Saturday. Obviously, I am investing in getting a better camera stand. So I'll be able to pull out the um, tarantulas and show you um, the tarantulas for you so you know what i'll pull one out for you just so we can see so um let me know which ones you want me to pull out um so we can have a look and obviously i can flip the camera around and show you that species um properly i'm filming on my phone so i've definitely got to have a laptop or a tablet at the side of me so I can read the comments. So let me just go and get um go get another spare phone so I can see if anybody leaves comments. So I'll be back two two seconds just while I go get a new phone. Just so I can have something at the side of me so I can read comments and I'll be back.
So there we are, we've got another phone. So I can literally now just watch it on here and read the comments. It's, it's good to have a spare um, handy phone. So yeah, let me know in the comments if this is something you want to see, like every um, Saturday night. Obviously, like I said, it's only going to be an hour to an um, hour live stream. So let me know um, in the comments which spider you would like to see. And obviously I'll pull it out and I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you that spider. So just give me um give me some in the comments to let me know which one you want to see, whether you want to see a sling. We've got loads of different kinds of spiders, so let me know whether you want to see a sling, whether you want to see um an old world. Or you want to see my true spider, my um, Alphanax, drop a comment and let me know which one to see and I'll pull it out. You know what, let's start off with um, the first one. I'll pull one out for you actually. <coughs> um, we'll have a look at, let me see, we'll see if we can have a look at our beast smithy, shall we? Wherever it is. There it is. You can just... Um, See in the corner. I'll take the lid off for you, and I will obviously flip the camera around and give you a look. So I'll take the lid off gently. I'll pull the lid off, and we'll quickly flip the camera around. I'm just going to move it a minute, just while I flip the camera around, just so you can see the um, B Smithy, which is just as you can see. Just down there, it's unsex juvenile look. We just gently, there we go. Just gently move the cork bark, and there she is, or he, our unsex um, brachypalma. Well, not Smithy anymore. Formerly known as the brachypalma homore, used to be a B Smithy, but obviously they reclassified it to the brachypalma homore which sucks but you get a lot of that they reclassify spiders it's the same with the um, haplopalma species they reclassify some of them and call them the Cirrapatipus but there's the B. smithy obviously it's a juvenile still doing well put the lid on and we'll have a little look at some more spiders <clears throat> obviously some of the tanks I won't pull out and this episode, so I'm in the middle of redoing the I'm in the middle of redoing the spider cupboard, but that's the beast smithy. So right, let me have a look who we can take out next. <clears throat> Just to see. Um, you know what? We'll try and take out I know we can have a look at a bit that way about. We'll take out um let's have a look. Who's out about? Who are not out? Um, who else can we have a look at? I'm just trying to see who's out for you. I don't know who we can actually see. I will pull out my biggest spider for you. My Brachiosaurus Tarahydrona. Pink. Salmon bird eater. I'll pull it out and I will take you deeper in to the spider den. So I'll flip the camera around again and we'll have a look at my biggest spider in my collection, my Lassidora Parahide Bonner. Um, currently the biggest. She's obviously not fully grown yet. She gets a lot bigger than this, around about nine and a half, ten inches plus. As you can see, she's in this massive um, exo tero enclosure, which is a decent size, but a bit <laughs> expensive. This one cost me nearly in the region of 100 quid. The only downfall to these exo tero enclosures, if you look at the back, is the foam. They come with this kind of foam background 
which is pretty much you just take the lid off and you can pull the foam out obviously i like these enclosures because they you've got a lock so you can actually stick a lock in there because they've got holes at the side for locks you know your vents at there your vents at your front and your mesh lid but like i said the only problem with these enclosures is the foam the foam takes up way too much i guarantee when i redo this enclosure and re redo her enclosure I'll pull the foam out the back and there'll be at least extra five to ten centimeters of room in this enclosure great enclosures a bit pricey um, and obviously you lose a bit of room with the foam and it's the only one I've got but this girl's coming out of here and this girl's going down in that corner because I am um, like I said redoing all the um, entire spider room and so yeah she's coming out and she's going in the corner of a heat mat pretty much a lot of these spiders will be in the komodo glass enclosures i don't know how many yet because obviously some of the spiders are pretty settled in the standard critter keepers um so it'll be half and half some species um i think i'm going to put the green bottle blue obviously the brachypalma homore um the livid the lividum the cobalt blue and the chillabacchis kern kraken um i think i'm going to also put the orphanaceous in one Um, I think I might put the Nandu Kamatis in one, and obviously I might also put in the um, Simani, and I might also put in the Davalorus Pentalorus. What I'll do in a minute is I'll actually grab that girl, because that girl is a channel favorite some people always want to um see this girl she's the girl she's the um girl with the dodgy walking issue um so i'll pull her out in a minute so i'm going to sip my coffee so yeah we'll pull her out and we'll take a look at her see how she's doing As you can see, she's in the smaller Komodo enclosure. They do smaller, they do a smaller um, square Komodo enclosure for your dwarf species, which obviously when this girl gets rehoused into a bigger Komodo, I'm thinking of potentially getting a pumpkin patch or a Trinidad olive for this enclosure. We'll have a look at this girl anyway. Yeah, she's still walking funny, bless her. So we'll have a look. We'll put the camera back around and take a look at this girl. As you can see, look, she's still walking funny. She's still got that dodgy leg, dodgy leg issue, as you can see. Look, but she's still doing fine. She's like, <laughs> slowly pods about. And it's only the back legs that are the issue. As you can see, look. The front legs are fine the front legs are thick and healthy and the back legs are thin but she's pretty much had this issue since i um bought her which i don't know whether she was born like that but she's had this issue since i bought her but she eats fine and you can see she's um webbing up okay and she's molting fine it's just that she has a bit of trouble walking walking she walks funny with his back legs now i don't know if um in the future she is going to um obviously 
malt and fully grow out of it or her next malt whether she's going to have the same problem again but like I said I bought her I bought her like in this condition so maybe she was just born like that and maybe she will potentially never um, grow out of this issue doing well webbing well eating well decent size as you can see big chunky front legs it's only the back legs that that the issue because they're a bit f if you can see look they're a bit thinner compared to the other legs but all in all that girl is doing all right i know a lot of people want to see her because um of her little disability and she's a favorite among some of my subscribers so yeah i will be potentially before the weather turns really really cold bringing in a, another spider for the year i don't know what kind yet um i don't know whether to get a another syrupatropus species or potentially look at a female pumpkin patch or trinidad olive um they're the current three that i'm looking at and i'm also looking at in the new year or maybe when I bring in a new spider, also bring in a, another scorpion um, to the collection. Because a spider shop, I've got some cool scorpions at the moment. They've got um, Death Stalker. Obviously, I've got the Asian Forest Scorpion, um, which I'll pull out in a minute. So I'll put this one back and we'll try and pull out the Asian Forest Scorpion. Take a look at that girl. obviously i've got tons of spiders yeah like i said i've got tons let me just move the camera back a bit so you can actually see my face properly Ooh. okay i didn't mean for that to happen like i said this camera stand is absolutely crap Hence why I'm saving up for a new bloody camera stand in the next couple of weeks. Because this camera stand is, in my opinion, rubbish. Ah, uh, reposition the camera stand. Sorry about this. Obviously, I don't get paid a lot by YouTube, so I'm having to, all the equipment and stuff, I'm having to, um, literally, by myself right here. Right, what's I doing? <laughs> I forgot because of that. Oh yeah, Asian forest scorpion. Mm. Only scorpion in the collection. All right, chill out. We're getting rehoused in a week, so this girl is mental. I'm a hon rehousing her. She's skittish. She's still not fully grown, and she's in that case. So right, let's look at the. Asian forest scorpion, shall we? Unsex, like I said, unsexed. <coughs> Petra spinifer, the Asian forest scorpion. Couple of slings. And we've got a. <laughs> Alright, Brian, how are you doing? One of my slings, which is my Tajara sandery. Um, I thought I'd do a um, Saturday Night Live, um, Brian, about an hour every Saturday Night Live, just showing you the different spiders and answering people's questions. And in here, we've got a freshly malted, right, let me flip the camera around, because we've just got a freshly malted sling, a freshly malted Permitopus atrochromatus Red Island Bird Eater. Quickly pull the camera around and take a look at this little girl. And there you go. Freshly malted. There's a skin there. She's still not um, fully grown yet. And she's not red yet. Obviously, as she grows, she will get a lot more red. This is the only Phomictopus species in the collection. Phomictopus species... Um, are pretty good. The only Mictopus species I've ever owned in the past was the 
um, Haitian Brown, the Femicta Piss Concerides, and that girl was in a league of her own. She was nasty as hell. She was pretty much just as bad as some of my um, Asian species. But a little surprise molt. Obviously, she's going to get a lot bigger than this. Just a enclosure I made myself, just an old food tub. So a bit of dirt, milk bottle cap, and just some air holes. And obviously, as she gets a lot bigger, she will go into bigger enclosures. So yeah, call it a malt there. From our Vermictopus atrochromatus, Red Island Bird Eater. Um, decent price as well for a sling. I think for this girl, I paid roughly about maybe, I'll say about 25 to 30. Um, obviously, being a female, I bought her from Creatures of the North, a great, another great UK tarantula site. Um, the only tarantula sites I really buy spiders from in the UK is obviously the spider shop. Um, I've dealt with a spider shop for years, never had a problem with them, and obviously. Creatures from North is a recently discovered um, tarantula site that I bought a few um, spiders from. Obviously, that chromatus, natural chromatus. Um, what else did I buy from Creatures of North? I bought um, my female Petrunus lagardi. Yeah, the Petrunus lagardi. And everything else is from the spider shop. Got up the coffee. It's the, t the title. What are you looking for? Oh yeah, Asian forest scorpion. If people are wondering what I'm actually using for heating, I'm using. Um, I don't know if you can see it off camera, but I'm using a heat cable. Um, which I've literally recently just put on. Um, the only time I stick the heat cable on is when we get into October, November time. And when the weather warms, I take the heat cable off. And this is the first time this year I've had to use the heat cable here in the UK because we've had some pretty good weather. So right, let's see what our Asian forest scorpion is out. Which is getting rehouse as well. I've got an empty fish tank. Yeah, I've got an empty fish tank up there. So I will also be rehousing the Asian forest scorpion. <clears throat> Petra spinifer. And like I said, I do want to add a, another one or two scorpions to the collection. Definitely the um, death stalker scorpion. So we'll take a look at this, wherever it is. Asian forest unsexed. And I've never seen this one molt yet. Just been sat in the corner, threw its tail up. So we'll pull the, obviously, get the camera, turn the camera around so we can take a good little look at it. And there it is the Petra Spinifer, my only currently scorpion. Chilling out there. Now these things here are awesome. These I actually buy from Amazon in a bulk bag and they're actually used for aquariums. They're called um, Indian um, almond leaves or catapa leaves. I buy a massive bag of them, um, 20 odd pound, and I get 50 odd of these leaves, which I'll go and show you in a minute. I'll go and pull the bag out and show you just um, the size of them. And they actually, I think, I know they're used for aquariums, but they're dry, and they just add to your substrate system. And there it is, Asian forest scorpion chilling out in the corner. As you can see, I'm not going to bloody move it. You know what? Gent you know what? I'm not going to gently move it. I was going to get the tongs and gently give it a prod, but no, nope, it's okay. It's a bit caught bark. Nothing too fancy. And the soil 
soil I'm using on this is actually a mixture. It's a um, potting soil um, with these little stony bits in it, which actually suck up the moisture. I buy that on Amazon as well, but I forget the name of it. I get a big bag for about five or six pound. And these little, like I said, these little stony bits actually soak up the moisture. I don't use cocoa fibre. I just find out it dries too quick. And if you've got, <clears throat> if you've got a um, tarantula that kicks a lot of hairs, dealing with um, cocoa fibre in hairs, Yeah, dealing with cocoa fibre and hair is not good. Oh, okay, cheers, Brian. I didn't know that. I bought it on, I bought it on sex from the spider shop here in the UK. <laughs> and this one, I will not pick up. This one's not as friendly as your emperor. <laughs> there she, there he, there it is. Chilling out. Not molted yet. I've never seen it molt. But I think they are cool, you know. They are something different to the collection. And when they eat, they're pretty funny when they eat as well. They're not like a spider when they eat. So you have to go back and watch one of my feeding videos when I've actually actually caught this eating. The way they eat is completely different to a tarantula. Personally, some people must have believed some people must be handless, but this one is, like I said, compared to the Empress Scorpion my brother had, this one's definitely a bit different. This one's got a bit more attitude. Um, the Empress Scorpion my brother had, um, he had it in his hands, he had it run across his bed, he let it run across the floor. <laughs> and that was well tamed, but this one, not so much. Cool to look at though, cool to feed. And obviously when you stick a blue light on it, it pretty much glows, but I've not got a blue light, but that's something I definitely want to get as well. A blue, um, you, you can get them on Amazon or you can get them from the spider shop in the UK. They're um, specially light, specially designed lights for um, scorpions. I I don't know what it's called. It's a name for it. Something to do with it. Something to do with their body. When you shine a specific blue light on them, they um, look pretty much luminous, like glow in the dark kind of thing. <laughs> Well, all yours are feisty as well. Nice one, Brian. And no doubt, um, also, you like me, you'll find you can pick up your Empress Scorpion, and they're they're brilliant for handling. So I'm looking at another Scorpion as well to bring into the collection. Potentially, like I said, a smaller species, or I might go the route and potentially pick up a Desert Hairy. Or a Death Stalker. That'd be pretty cool to have something different in the collection. Obviously, your Death, your, your Desert Hairies, and your Death Stalkers are more of a um, scorpion that likes um, scorpions that like um, sandy environments. Yeah, Emperor's are pucker, but I've not seen a captive bred. Emperor Scorpion on any of the tarantula sites I use for ages. I've seen wild caught unsexed emperors, but finding a captive bred emperor is pretty much near impossible unless you want to pay a lot of money. That's the only trouble with some species of um, tarantula. You find that it's damn near impossible to pick up captive bred females that species and when you do they go for an extortionate price 
I mean, even here in the UK, recently um, I saw a captive bred female, adult P Metallica, and it was still at 195 pound, which is absolutely insane money. Now don't get me wrong, I love my tarantulas, but I'm not paying £195 for a female. No way. I think the... Uh, I'll look at the tank in a minute. I'm just going to grab, grab that bag of leaves to show you what I'm on about. So here we go, these are what I'm talking about, you get about 50 of them, this size off Amazon, for about 10 to 20 quid. In a bag like this, they are used for aquariums, and like I said, what I do is I take one, I um, use my trusted aquarium scissors, which are here. Trusty aquarium pointer scissors, and I just cut them up and then stick them on top of the dirt. And I think they give a natural, holistic look to your soil. So, if you want some, um, definitely look on Amazon, um, Amazon UK or Amazon.com. Look for Indian almond leaves or Indian catapa leaves. Grab yourself some of these, cut them up, stick them on top of your scorpion or your tarantula soil. And it makes it look a bit more realistic. It makes it look like a forest floor. A great little find by myself. That's just a bag of stuff I keep in the bottom of tops. Bits of cork bark, my almond leaves. Right, who else is out and about? Oh, the old worlds are not out tonight. None of the old worlds are out. Um, the the garage is not out. It's not a time of night yet. So yeah, what I'm doing is like I said, this wooden shelf, this wooden shelf here, I'm pulling that out. I'm pulling that out. The wooden shelf at top of the arboreal on is staying but this here this wooden shelf that's getting pulled out um pinky's obviously getting put around the corner with a heat mat and obviously on the floor because pulling the shelf out and taking pinky out will give me a lot more room in here and i'm gonna have one side a stack of these plastic enclosures, I'm keeping some of the spiders in. And on the other side, I'm going to have rows of these grass Komodo enclosures that I'm putting some of the spiders in. And obviously, all these enclosures can stack, so I can potentially, if I wanted to, stack loads and pretty much take the stack of enclosures to the top shelf if I really want to and it give me more room um give me more room to get more spiders in here obviously this has got the door on it's the reason why they're in here and not out in the open on racking units yet is because I have a four-year-old daughter who last year I forgot to shut the stair gate I came in the bedroom last year and I found my four-year-old daughter had pulled out the Asian forest scorpions enclosure, took the lid out, was playing about with it. <laughs> so the spiders are in this cupboard. Now, how have I lit the cupboard up? I have lit the cupboard up with an aquarium LED. So basically what I've done is I'll show you, is I've 
mine's eyes. It's just an old aquarium LED that I've stuck to the side. And I just run the cable round to the plug socket at the other side. And that's how I light up the cupboard. It's only lit one side, I thought. Pretty genius idea. Um, an old aquarium LED. Mounted it to the top of there and that lights up the whole cupboard. It's energy saving as well. Don't give off that much electric, obviously with the energy crisis. So yeah, anything else you want to see? Any other? So actually you want to see, obviously some of them are not out, but let me know. So cheers, Brian. Yeah, let me know if you want to see anybody else. And before I end this week's episode, um, obviously Brian's just tuned in late, so Brian don't know. Basically, Brian, I'll be doing a live every Saturday around 8 to 9 o'clock for about nearly 40 minutes to an hour um, for a cup of coffee, going around, answering um, people's questions and just having a look at any spiders. So let me know which one you want to see. Oh, that's it. Before I go, let's, um, before we end this week's episode, let's have a look at Tank. We'll have a look at tank. There's a reason why this is obviously a female, but due to the size of her, I've called her tank. Obviously, my last Eudora Power High Bonnet is called Pinky. Yeah, so if anybody um, hit the notification bell and you will think, where is she? Yeah, as I was saying, Pinky. I don't name all my spiders, I let my daughter name some of them. And this is Tank, my Acampuscaria Gina Colata, Brazilian White Knee. So we're going to pull the camera. Obviously, I'm getting a new camera stand, so it'll be easier to manoeuvre around. And there she is. You can see why I've called this one Tank, because they are pretty much a tank. They, um, Constantly eat and eat and eat and eat. <laughs> and as you can see by this girl, absolutely fat ass bum. So she's on a diet. Now the reason why she's on a diet is because I never let my tarantula abdomens get bigger than the carapace. I always like to keep the abdomen the same size as the carapace. I've seen some tarantulas out there that their abdomens look like the size of golf balls. They look like they're going to explode. So until this girl molts, she's on a diet. I'll put stick water in there for her. And that'll be it. I've always, always throughout the years of keeping tarantulas, always never let their abdomens get as big as their carapace to the point that anybody can't walk and this one's got to be rehoused because where she tips the water out it looks like there's a little bit of mold yeah it's a bit damp down there so i've got to rehouse this one give her some fresh substrate that's the problem with tarantulas sometimes they bloody I don't personally in my opinion <laughs> but some of the some of the tarantulas I've seen bloody throw the water dish about that's full of water and you end up with little bits of mold on the substrate so she will get new substrate don't worry um take out the mold and obviously give um, new substrate because you don't want mould to kill your tarantulas and in some cases some substrates i've used in the past i've had um where the tarantulas i've taken the water dish about i've had mushrooms grow from the substrate 
that was tank. Um, obviously, I've got some cool videos coming on the channel. Rehousings. People are going to love them videos. I've got to rehouse um, two very defensive tarantulas. Well, I still have been warm in this cupboard. I still have been warm in my living room. I've got to rehouse two. Very defensive spiders. I've got to rehouse a lividum and I've got to rehouse a Chilabrachis current traction in the next coming weeks. Um, obviously, a week or two, I get my big bit of money and I'll be buying the glass enclosures for the current trapping and the living them and rehousing them i'll tell you what before we finish the video off um i'll make it about 50 minutes and we'll look at a cool little spider that is pretty recently not seen much in the hobby and when I saw um, that the spider shop had one of these, and not seeing these in the hobby much, I decided to grab one. And that is the Orphanaceous SP Blue Quazon. Them, nope, them little things in the water are not mites, they're springtails. Before people asked, all my clothes have got springtails as part of to help to eat decaying food. So yeah, this I bought is the um, Quarzon, Orphanaceous SP Quarzon Blue. And you can see, when she molted, she was shining blue, but now she's hardened up, she doesn't look so blue. Which is pretty much, um, I like this girl, but pretty much annoying. I thought after she molted, she would stay blue, but nope, there's not very much blue to her at all. Obviously, she's um, the Orphanaceous, so she's in the same family as the Orphanaceous Philippinus, which is the bright orange tarantula, the brightest um, of orange I've seen in a tarantula. Not commonly seen in the hobby, these. Captive bred female. Uh, I think this one cost me um, thirty pound. Stunning little um, tarantula. Don't get very big. Heavy webbers like the Orphanaceous. Nine liter shoe box enclosure. So yeah, definitely um, a cool little spider that is not commonly seen in the hobby. Another enclosure I made myself. I bought this enclosure from my local bargain store about three pound and I literally drilled the holes myself on the lid. On the sides, great little closure, decent size, nine liters. Didn't even cost me a five. This uh, I do love my spiders. Tell people now. I bet you, Brian. I bet you, Brian gets the same response that I do. You tell people what pets you've got. And they don't want to know you, or they go, Ugh, why do you want to keep spiders for? They're boring, they don't move, they don't do nothing. We get that a lot in the hobby from people who don't understand tarantulas. 
where you tell him you've got Tracks as pets, you get what do you want to keep a spider for, or or they're boring, they don't move, they don't do much. What's the point in loving them? I'm not going to get into a rant, <laughs> but my opinions on that is why have you got a bloody dog for? A dog that just runs around, shits and eats. Or why have you got a cat for? You know? That's the only downside is when you tell people about tarantulas, is you do get some of them that are just don't understand them. Or you get some people that are just horrible. That would be like, well, if I see you're trying to escape, I'm going to stamp on it. Mm, no. I'm sure Brian maybe has not had this. But, I, but I've had it quite a few times um, in the past. And I've told people what pets I've got. They've looked at me funny. I would have made a sly, nasty comment about the tarantulas. They're just uneducated, in my opinion. They're either stubborn or they're just stubborn and uneducated. Yeah, you can't, you can't potentially, you can't hold tarantulas as much as you can sit and stroke a dog or sit and stroke a cat. Don't mean it does not mean you don't love your tarantulas as less just because you can't bloody stroke your spider as you can stroke a bloody cat, dog, or rabbit, or hamster. Don't mean they should be um, treated any differently, in my opinion. Right, let's, let's have a look at one more spider, shall we? So, <laughs> I'm not going on for a rant, I'm just saying. I'm sure a lot of people have had that. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted um, to do the channel, is to actually educate people. I know there's loads of tarantulas out there, tarantula channels, you've got uh, Brian, um, Creatures of the Night, um, a subscriber. I comment on his videos and he comments on my videos, so go and check him out. Um, there's a lot of tarantula channels out there. We've all got our own styles and different tractors that we keep. Um, so there's plenty of space out there for tarantula channels on YouTube. Um, we don't need to compete with each other. Um, we just need to help each other out, um, share each other's videos, um, comment on each other's videos and give them a like so it helps their videos out. And just share our channels out. There's no need for... I've seen it um, in the past, a lot of animosity between tarantula channels trying to compete with each other. And there's plenty of space out there. We've all got our different personalities, experiences and ways we keep our tarantulas. So there's no need to um, fight for views, fight for subscribers. There's plenty of people in the world um, to share um subscribers with to share um views with so why already animosity between some of these tarantula channels why not get along um enjoy each other's content maybe share bloody tips between each other and share the um subscribers and share the views that's my personal opinion i'm sure brian i'm sure brian if you're still watching you must be on the same opinion as me. Um, there's no need for um, to compete with each other. We've all got our own unique personalities. Um, how we look after our tarantulas. Obviously, how I look after my tarantulas might necessarily be something different to how Brian keeps his tarantulas, or how um, Dave's Beasties keeps his tarantulas, or how the Spider Man keeps his tarantulas. We all um, have our own personalities. Um, different ways we keep our tarantulas and different species obviously there may be some species that Brian's got um, in his collection that I personally don't want in my collection or maybe a tarantula cat a tarantula cat, big female 
Tratula channel here on YouTube. Um, shout out to Tratula Cat. She must we never see this video or never see my channel. Big shout out to Tratula Cat. Oh, thanks, Chris. Uh, no problem, buddy. So, yeah, um, Tratula Cat may have some um, Tratulas in her collection or true spiders in her collection that I don't ever want to get or don't ever want to work with. Um, it doesn't mean I don't love my tarantulas just because there's some species that I don't want to work with or there's some species that I don't want in my collection. It just swings around about, you know. What was I going to do <laughs> before rambling on? Um, I was going to, oh yeah, pull out the um, unset. Um, Peter Minya, weren't I? No, this would be um, this would be every Saturday, Chris, about eight to nine o'clock, and I'll be on for about nearly an hour. Tamapoas Aminia, Venezuelan sun tiger, beautiful species. And potentially, I've done, I've done, I've got the care video coming out for this um, next week. A bit of a defensive species when they're fully grown, the Samapoas Aminia, wherever she is. Well, you can just see her, but yeah, this is a medium sized arboreal enclosure from the spider shop, which will serve her well until she fully grows acrylic yeah summer poets and minya i've had a few of these over the years and these come with some attitude put the camera around and we'll see if we can spot it shall we try and see if we can spot it can we spot it mm. no i can't make it out is it there is it there? I don't think it is. Is it? Nope. I well, just see a little bit of the butt. Just a tiny little bit of butt sticking out. Obviously, at this size, at this size, the summer poets tend to burrow rather than be an arboreal species. I've noticed that over the years, keeping summer poets is at juvenile stage they tend to make little burrows like this and live down there until fully grown and then when they're fully grown they live their life like an arboreal spider but out of all the summer poets like i said out of all the summer poets genus i find the aminia to be a bit more aggressive or defensive unlike your samapoas polka now that's my that's my experience over the years um, of keeping samapoas is that aminia is definitely more of a i'm going to say little shit compared to the summer poets polka stone spider though um, this one's called nike and the reason why this one's called nike is because obviously fully grown they're jet black and they have little orange lines on their legs that look like night ticks hence why this one's called nike touch wood it's a female but you never know could turn out to be a male if it turns out to be male then I'll keep it until it grows and passes. Obviously, I'm not into breeding spiders. That's not my aim. Yeah, as you can see, that empty tank on that unit over there is what the Asian forest scorpion is going into. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm not into breeding spiders. It's just something that I've never... 
Um, who have you been into? I know a lot of people. Dave's, Dave's Beasties. He might never see this video. Um, Dave's Beasties, if you do ever come across this video. Um, I'm not into breeding my spies like you, buddy. A great channel, though. Dave's Beasties. I love watching Dave's Beasties videos. Especially his breeding videos. That's what he pretty much does. Tons of breeding videos. Great English YouTuber. I've never been really interested in breeding. I'm more interested in getting females um, and obviously keeping the females and sharing my experiences and information and educating people on them and letting the females live out their lives in my care. Maybe one day in the future. I might, um, <laughs> if I ever get to the point where I'm big enough, I might breed tarantulas. You never know. But I'm not at that um, stage like some of these channels. Some of these channels are on ridiculous subscriber numbers. But I don't really want... Um, how can I put it? Without sounding arrogant or an idiot. I'm just happy with the subscribers that I've got. And if I get new subscribers and new people liking the videos and seeing the videos and they jump and subscribe, absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm not all about subscribers. I never have been. Even though my channel is now monetized. I'm not interested in the old YouTube play buttons or whatever. I just want to share my experiences, my knowledge, and how I keep my tarantulas. And educate people about these wonderful animals that are misunderstood. And if what if I can educate one person, um, then I feel I've accomplished what I want to do. I can educate one person and make one person and want to learn about tarantulas and want to actually go out and buy a spider themselves, then I've done what I set out to do. I'm not in this, I'm not in this for the um, play buttons or the fame. I just love the hobby. I just want to share my experiences with everybody else. I'm sure the same as Brian and Chris. Um, they want to share how they keep their animals with everybody. But then you get some people that are just literally in it for the clout and the play buttons and who have not got a single clue on how to keep a spider. There's some channels out there. It's a Japanese or Chinese channel. I don't know if it's still going. But they were in it for the clout and the money they used to do a video i think it was daily or weekly they put a tarantula versus a scorpion and they get a big massive um, tank and they let a tarantula fight a scorpion or they put a tarantula versus a hornet or a scorpion versus a um, pac-man frog and let them fight and they were getting Millions of views and millions of subscribers. And people enjoy watching a bloody tarantula and scorpion fight. I don't know if the channel's still out there. I can't remember the name of it. But I'm sure some of you have seen the channel or some of the videos. Um, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, who wants to see a bloody Pac-Man frog try and take on a scorpion? Or a tarantula take on a hornet or a tarantula hawk madness some people for you anyways i'm leaving it there for this week's um episode of tarantulas and coffee i hope you like it and obviously um, next week's videos are a couple of care videos coming out um, a care video coming out for the summer palace and minya and a care video coming out for the Cirrapatropus lividum, um, cobalt blue. And I will be back again um, 
next Saturday night. I'm going to try and aim for nine o'clock. Yeah, nine o'clock every Saturday night um, with a brand new episode of Trenches and Coffee, where you can ask me ask me your questions, and pick which spiders you want to look at, and just generally have a talk. Thanks for watching this first episode of Trenches and Coffee. Um, stay tuned for the care videos coming out um, Monday and Thursday. But yep, Mondays and Thursdays are um, tarantula videos and obviously the saltwater aquarium videos. And Saturday nights are going to be an hour every week um, live. So if there's any questions you want to get prepared for any future Saturday Night Live episodes, then um, write down your questions. Um, I'm open to answer any questions. Um, and obviously, if there's any spiders you want to see in future um, Saturday Night Live videos, then let me know. Obviously, some of them are pet holes, so we might not see them, but we can have a look anyways. So thanks for watching this week's very first live episode of Tarantulas and Coffee and I will see you next Saturday night 9 o'clock for another live episode of Tarantulas and Coffee as always thanks for watching, hope you enjoy stay safe, bye bye